Hello my friends, welcome to another day of Vlogmas. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about book to screen adaptations of 2023. This has been um, an interesting year for adaptations. This is by no means like a complete list of everything that's come out this year. I didn't make a complete list. This is more so curated to things that I'm interested in and mostly things that I've read, although there are some on here that I haven't read the book based on the show, haven't watched the show yet either, but I wanted to, uh, first of all, bring some of these to your attention. Second of all, remind myself that some of these things are out so I can go watch them. And thirdly, give you my input on the things that I have read and watched. So let's get into it. I'm gonna go kind of in like release date order, I guess. So the first is Knock at the Cabin, which came out in February 3rd. It is a movie. Um, this is based on Paul Tremblay's The Cabin at the End of the World, which is a book that I, I still have not read yet and I have not watched the movie. From what I hear though, from people who have read the book and watched the movie, the movie was uh, pretty much shit. <laughs> so that's encouraging. I don't know if I'm gonna watch the movie, but I do want to read the book, especially after having read a Paul Tremblay this year and really enjoying it. I read my first Paul Tremblay, which was the Paul Bears Club. I loved it. Like, five stars. Absolutely loved it. So I definitely want to uh, read more from this author, and I definitely want to read the cabin at the end of the world, potentially watch the movie. I'd be very interested to hear your guys' opinion. So if you have read the book and watched the movie or just one or the other, let me know in the comments what you thought about either or. Next we have a show which I have started watching. I just haven't finished yet because I, I don't know. I don't know that I was loving it, um, but that is Daisy Jones and the Six. So the first season of Daisy Jones and the Six came out um, in March, March 3rd on Amazon. This was, is, I should say, one of my all-time favorite books. I absolutely loved this. I loved getting kind of a little peek into the music industry and I really loved Daisy Jones. I really loved the dynamic between these characters and the way it was told in interview style was made it even more engaging. Um, I started watching the show recently, actually, just like last month in November, and I watched, I think, the first three episodes, and I was a little thrown about, like, the actors, the ages they're supposed to be in the book um, and in the show, and, like, the disconnect there, that threw me. I don't know why little details like that, like, really throw me for a loop, but it really did, because the band got together in the, it was like the 70s, and it's 30 years later that they're doing the interviews. They're in their 60s at this point. They shouldn't look the way they look in the interview portion of the show. Like, I thought they would use different actors. Anyway, that's not important. The show so far has been interesting. I really wish that I had watched it earlier this year when everyone else was watching it and I could have been part of the, the buzz and the excitement and the conversation because now I feel alone in my watch of the show and I, I don't know that I'm getting out of it what I wanted. But like I said, very early on, only watched the first three episodes, so I will continue on. But so far it was interesting. So far it was interesting. It seemed like it was very closely following the book, which was exciting. I do wanna finish the show off before the end of the year, so hopefully I'll do that and I'll probably give you my thoughts in one of these vlogs. But for right now, I'm, I'm kind of iffy. I'm kind of iffy on the show versus the book. The book is always better. Okay, next we have probably one of the most disappointing adaptations of this year for me, and that is Shadow and Bone season two. Obviously, I love this series, one of my favorite series of all time, and Shadow and Bone season one, when that was released, was almost perfection for me. And of course we know they added in the whole Six of Crows storyline into the show. I really liked the way it went. I loved the characterization. I loved what they did with Alina, with the Darkling. Ben Barnes really brought the Darkling to life. It was immaculate. I really appreciate it. And it was just like so beautiful getting to see a story that I love so much come to life on screen. But season two came out this year, back in March, on Netflix, of course, and it was horrible. Like, it was nothing like we deserved. They mishandled so many moments. It was so rushed. So the first season covered Shadow and Bone, and the sec this second season tried to cram Ruin and Rising and Siege and Storm into one season. 
which was definitely to its detriment. The pacing was all over the fucking place and the Darkling was useless. He just became a caricature of a villain. And he is so nuanced and has so much more depth in the series than that, that I was taken aback by what they did to him in the show. They cheapened a couple of characters' deaths. I don't wanna say who because I don't wanna give things away, but there's a specific character who dies in the shows and in the book who died in like a very self-sacrificing way. It was a very emotional, intense moment in the book and the way they did it in the show didn't even come close. It was a mess. <laughs> it was an absolute mess. I think I finished watching that season and I was like, what the hell? And I tried to be so positive and I think I gave it like a three out of five stars. It's more like a one and a half star. And I feel like maybe the horribleness of season two, the mishandling of everything, is why we're now not getting a third season or a spin-off show for Six of Crows. I don't know if you guys heard, but that's not gonna happen anymore, which is very sad because the spin-off Six of Crows series was gonna be the one thing to save it for me. Like, they did such a horrible job with season two of Shadow and Bone that I was like, well, at least we still have Six of Crows to look forward to, but now we don't, and it's really heartbreaking um, that we don't, and I feel really bad about what they did with season two. I'm sorry to go on and on and rant so much about it, but I I really had a horrible time with season two of Shadow and Bone. Tell me your thoughts down in the comments. If you watched season two, what did you think? I think compared to season one and what I had come to expect, it was such a huge disappointment. Back in June, July of this year, Silo season one came out on Apple, was it Apple? Yeah, on Apple TV Plus, which is adapted from Wool by Hugh Howey. And this was excellent. This is one of the best adaptations of 2023. Let me tell you right now, if you haven't seen it, you need to go watch it. It is so good. I mean, of course, first read the book and then go watch it because the book is really good as well. It definitely followed pretty closely to the book, which or books, which was nice, but it did do its own kind of thing, which anything at all that they changed in the show just made it that much more interesting visually. I'm always here for any kind of changes they make as long as they're not like ridiculous like Shadow and Bone. One of the best things I've watched in 2023 full stop like not just specifically an adaptation. It was so engaging. I was dying each week when I had to wait for the next episode to come out. I absolutely loved this TV show. I highly recommend if you love sci-fi the like just the mystery element and not really knowing what's going on, why we're in this situation situation. It was very fun to follow in the book and I feel like it was even more interesting to follow on the show. Listen, I hardly ever think that shows or movies are better than the books they're based on, but Silo just as good if not better than the books. So highly recommend this adaptation. This got five out of five stars for me. Absolutely. You need to go out and watch it after you read the book because the books are of course really great as well. This is a trilogy and I actually read this um, this year. Like the show prompted me to read the books because I just had to know what was going on. It is so intriguing. Um, so yeah, highly recommend the books and highly recommend the show. Okay, then we had season two of Good Omens. This came out July 28th on Amazon and I'm very ashamed to say that I have not watched it. <laughs> I have not watched it. I loved season one of Good Omens. I think that it was a perfect adaptation, followed very closely to the book Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. If you haven't read the book, please read the book. It is so much fun. I laughed so much reading that book. It is hilarious. And the first season of the show, of course, is hilarious too. I think that Michael Sheen and David Tennant complement each other so well. And it was just absolutely great. It was everything I could have wanted it to be. Season two came out and I was so excited about it. I really wanted to rewatch season one before I watched season two, but I didn't get around to it, unfortunately. But I will. I will. I probably will watch that before the end of the year, 
possibly we shall see the book was five stars for me season one was five stars for me i have no doubt that i'm absolutely gonna love season two although i haven't really heard anyone say anything negative or positive about season two so if you did watch season two of good omens please let me know what you thought about it okay one that i was somewhat interested in watching but didn't get around to watching this year is The Last Voyage of Demeter. Uh, this is a movie. It came out August 11 and it's based on one chapter of Dracula. It was an interesting place to pull from, to adapt, I guess. And so that intrigued me. Dracula, me and Dracula didn't 100% uh, get along. I liked the story overall, but didn't love the process of reading it. But it's Dracula. Everybody knows Dracula. It's a classic for a reason. And I do like my vampire stories. So this is one I am still interested in watching, but I didn't get around to watching it. Let me know if you watched it and what you thought. I don't have high hopes for it. I know it didn't really get good ratings either. So I don't know. I might skip it. I might watch it. In September, we had The Changeling be adapted on Apple TV. And oh, what a good adaptation. Although I have I have notes, like I have thoughts about certain things and certain directions they went in. There's definitely moments watching the show that felt cringe to hear out loud. Like they were things that were like word for word lines from the book, but just felt cringy to hear spoken out loud, even though I read the book and I didn't feel that way while reading the book. But this is an adaptation that follows closely to the books. I will say there is like one or two, maybe it's just the one episode that kind of went off somewhere weird and went off script. And it was a very weird episode. I don't know what that was about but other than that like one episode i really loved the season as a whole and i am hoping and praying for a second season um the tv show is narrated by victor laval himself as well which was really fun to see and i loved the characters in here i thought they were great i really liked emma the actress who played emma overall this is like a four out of five star adaptation for me i highly recommend if you've read change and loved it you need to check out the tv show it was really good besides that one episode <laughs> and if you haven't read the changeling what are you doing go read it this is one of my absolute favorite books from victor laval i love victor laval's storytelling and i don't know if laval wrote on the show but the storytelling in the show is very much laval-esque definitely his style. I think it honors the book very, it complements the book very much. Then we had A Haunting in Venice in September of this year. I did watch it when it was out in theaters. I absolutely loved this movie. I really can't talk about how well it was adapted or how closely it followed the book because this is supposedly <laughs> um based on halloween party by agatha christie and it's been a good decade or more since i read yeah wow it's been over a decade since i read halloween party so i couldn't tell you the specifics of the book but i the things that i remember from the book is that a little girl died she was found like drowned in a bobbing for apples bucket. There are certain elements in the movie that I remember from Agatha Christie books. So I don't know if this is like an adaptation where they took inspiration from more than one book, because I feel like Halloween Party was a completely different thing. But anyway, either way, I would have to reread Halloween Party in order to see like how closely it is to the book. But I really enjoyed visually this movie is stunning. I really loved Poirot and getting to see, because Poirot is a very particular person. He's very particular. He's very, not uptight, but just like has to have things a certain way and is very logical and doesn't let things trip him up mentally. And so the nature of this particular story really saw Poirot kind of out of his element a little bit, which was very fun to see on screen. So I highly recommend this movie. I really enjoyed it. It, it wasn't scary, but it was very eerie 
and atmospheric and I just thought it was a really good time so I highly recommend this movie I need to reread the book in October we had fall of the house of Usher on Netflix which is of course based on Edgar Allan Poe this is my Edgar Allan Poe collection I'm not gonna hold it up because it's heavy I loved this so of course fall of the house of Usher is uh, from creator Mike Flanagan who did the Haunting of Hill House TV show, as well as The Haunting of Blind Manor on Netflix, amongst other things, of course. But as far as these like adaptations of classic horror, this one was really good. It's It didn't top The Haunting of Hill House for me. Haunting of Hill House is still my absolute favorite. I still have not finished The Haunting of Blind Manor. I started watching it and then I just, never finished watching it because it was it was at a very high anxiety time for me and I was just too scared by it at the time but I will get around to watching that at some point um but Fall of the House of Usher was so good I really really loved how they set this up and how they made all the deaths of the children separate um Poe stories we had the pit and the pendulum we had the black cat I I just I loved what they did with this. All of the imagery and the stories that they put forth, they really gave us a, a truly horrible uh, family to follow so that in the end you really didn't care about them dying because they were all not very good people. Um, and I just overall think that this was done really well. I loved the inclusion of so many different Poe stories, like I said, the names that were used, the imagery, it worked so well. I would give it like a four out of five stars. I can't really talk about how well it follows the book because it's a short story and the basic idea was definitely there. I like how they kind of brought it full circle in the final episode and that really tied into the original Poe story. So this was this was great if you haven't watched it yet i highly recommend we have a second hugh howie story turned tv show that came out this year beacon 23 this came out november 12th on mgm plus i haven't watched it yet but i definitely want to this is one of my favorite books i really loved this it was funny it was exciting and i'm very curious to see what the show does and how it adapts this. From what I've seen of like the, the trailer, it seems that this is, it's definitely <laughs> making it more, uh, more action packed, I think, than the story actually is. There are like talks of things that happened in the past. And I think that the show is definitely going to be less isolating than the book was so i'm interested to see what they do with that but yeah haven't seen it yet but very excited to and then finally on november 17th we had the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins the movie was a lot better than i thought it was going to be i heard a lot of talk before i went to go see it about how it is at the same level as the hunger games or better i don't agree <laughs> Like, I don't agree. I think that the Hunger Games movies were way better than The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but I still think that it was a really good movie. After I watched the movie, I realized that I didn't have a lot of thoughts. I, I was just like, yeah, that was good. It was the same way with The Hunger Games. The movies really did stick very closely to the books, and it's the same thing with The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It did stick very close to the source material, which is something I always appreciate. I think that the actors did a great job. I just feel like the movie was lacking in fully representing the themes that Suzanne Collins had called out in the book, and I really wish I could go into detail with that but it, but it's been a while since i've read the book and so i can't say like 100 percent what those themes were but i do know that i came away from the book with certain feelings and emotions and i did not come away from the movie with those same feelings and emotions so it just felt like it was really good the movie was really good don't get me wrong but it just felt like there was something lacking for me. Um, I, I like some of the lines in the movie were like word for word almost from the book, which I really liked. I think it was a good movie. Visually, it was very appealing. The, the snakes, the snakes. <laughs> oh man, that was, that was a scene that I will never get out of my head. Uh, 
I do not like snakes. <laughs> I really don't. I mean, they're, they're fascinating animals. They really are, but they're... <sighs> freak me out a little. So yeah, I, I liked it. It was good. It's definitely not Hunger Games level though. I mean, that's just my opinion. Everyone has their own opinion, but I wouldn't go into this expecting it to be at the same level because it just wasn't for me. So those are the adaptations, the book to movie or TV show adaptations of 2023, some of which I have watched and enjoyed, some of which I have watched and not enjoyed, and some of which I still have yet to watch. Talk to me down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on these specific book to screen adaptations. Let me know which ones you've seen. And if there's any that I just blatantly forgot about that came out this year, please mention them down in the comments below. But that is gonna be it from me today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.